Hello, this is Tola from Trifold Production with another Blender quick tip. And in this quick tip, I'm going to introduce you guys, I don't know why that's a tongue twister, but introduce you guys to a, an add-on called the Projectile add-on. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's, uh, I think it's only for Blender, Blender 2.8 and above, but not below. Uh, but I'll leave a link of it in the description below this video. And it's pretty much straightforward, and what it does is just projects um, uh, objects or meshes across the path automatically so it's pretty simple pretty straightforward and let me uh, show you guys how it works <coughs> let me get a drink of water also it's like every time I seem to be to cough and clear my throat for some reason I think it's always the weather right, there we go so I'm going to use blender 2.82 I'm going to open that up uh, yeah come on buddy Sometimes Blender opens up pretty quick and sometimes it doesn't. Oh, there we go. And once you've downloaded the add on onto your computer, the same process go to Edit, Preferences, Install, and just navigate to where you've installed the add on or download the add on, add on onto your computer. And then click on Install Add on, which I've already done. Let me see. Try to navigate to where I've, I've saved mine. Let me type in projectile and once you've done that um, activate it by clicking in this checkbox and putting a check mark in there then it saves automatically in blender 2.8 and above and now what you want to do is it's going to be on this side of a uh, user interface on the right side and that's physics the physics tab and then you have to have an object selected in order to use the uh, the add-on so we have the cube the default cube selected and then new emitter and then the good thing about this add-on is that it shows you what is going to happen once it's been activated in terms of the path that your object is going to take let's click on five let me turn on my screencast keys to make it a lot easier for you guys to follow okay there it is close that back and it's going to be up here but five and one on the keyboard to get a just a on front onward look of what we're trying to do here. So down shift, middle mouse button, <coughs> excuse me, and drag up. And once we press, uh, let me go back to physics. Once we press press play on the uh, timeline here, it's just going to drop straight down because that's the path it's going to take according to what is being shown here by this uh, object path here. And in order for it to go where you want it to go, let's go from the top. Uh, the start frame is number one. This is the frames that you want to use in order to uh, see what the add-on is going to do and, and the amount of time you want it to do it in. So we're going to keep it at 50. If you want it to go longer, just increase their end frames to 250 or 400, wh whatever your preference is. And number is the number of uh, objects that you want the emitter to uh, I guess push along this path just in case you want you want to like make a scene where you're shooting bullets out of a gun your character shooting bullets out of a gun you can increase the number to like 10 or 20 and it will just keep the emitter uh, going in terms of uh, the number uh, number of objects that are coming out and going along the path this is start hidden which means that if you're going to start off your animation if you click this uh, box put a check mark in that it's going to be invisible and then once you press play you'll see the emitter which is also good for if you want that to hide what the object is before it actually appears in terms of it going along the path like from a gun bullets from a gun or a cannon things like that and the lifetime is how long you want the emitter to I guess be exist in the scene your velocity the speed obviously your incline in terms of the upward momentum of the object uh, azimuth I really don't know what that means uh, but angular velocity on the let's pull this out a little bit on the X Y and Z axis that that's the spin of the object if you want it to spin on the X axis you can adjust that parameter spin on the Y axis same thing Z axis the same thing or if you don't want it to spin at all in terms of it like maybe like a plane because this can also uh, help planes be projected across uh, the sky or maybe a, you're you, you create a hero 
you want to do like a superhero jump fly kind of deal you can do that too just leave this at zero but if you want to maybe have it spin on the x y and z axis you change those parameters but let me just show you exactly how it works so like i said we're going to leave the uh, start frame and the end frame the same at 1 and 50 and for now we're going to keep the uh, <coughs> excuse me the number of objects at one and we're going to keep this hidden the lifetime let's increase that to i guess let's make it i guess 50 also to match the uh, number of frames 50 enter and your velocity once again once you increase the velocity it changes the uh projection of your, your object so let's try something like 40 let's see how that looks 40 enter and then 5 1 again get that front view and then the incline let's turn that to 40 also let's see how that looks and now it's going to go straight up press shift the middle mouse button drag back we can see how it goes so you see the projection of the object so it's going to go along this path uh, azimuth let's, like I said like I mentioned before I don't know what that means I don't know if it has anything to do with the velocity but let's just see how this looks and one thing to keep in mind is whatever parameters you change here always click execute all that way it, it accepts those changes let's zoom in a little bit hold down our shift button and our middle mouse button let's scroll up a little bit shift and mouse middle mouse and then let's press play and there it goes and you can see it's not it's not spinning at all it's just going straight straight ahead with no spinning motion at all let's stop that go back to the beginning let's change some of these parameters to see uh, what we can see and yeah, my wife is out again this weekend with my children so I have a little time to get this uh, tutorial out hopefully like not like last week there won't be any unexpected pop-ups but uh, yeah, hopefully that's not going to happen but let's um, let's change the velocity let's make this 20 make this 10 and make this f uh, let's say 5 once again execute all to apply those changes and let's press well, let's, let's hot let's zoom in so we can see what's going to happen to this cube in terms of the rotation press play and it starts to spin but it's spinning slowly because these parameters are kind of low so that that gives a realistic look if you're if your character is throwing something it makes it more realistic because obviously you know when you throw something it just doesn't keep the same terms of, in terms of like no rotation doesn't just keep the same axis it spins slowly or quickly on an axis and that would simulate that pretty well but let's increase this and see what happens let's make this 40 make this 60 and make this 50 execute all and play now it's spinning a little bit more now that's more realistic of something being thrown across a field or across a parking lot or something like that but yeah and then the azimuth I'm gonna just test it out cuz just to see what that does I, I don't I don't know if it affects the rotation or not but let's just try it let me put in a a 60 in there and see what happens oh it actually makes the the distance a lot sharper higher pivots or higher uh, incline oh, that's that is different execute all let's play that okay so that's what the azimuth I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right but I guess that's that's what that does it changes the angle of your incline let's put that down to let's say 20 enter and what we're going to do is in terms of showing the uh, rapid or multiple objects going along this path let's increase the number of it let's make this 10 enter execute all play <coughs> and there you go just like that it increases the number automatically just by making that change let's stop that <coughs> excuse me and now let's try out another feature here that the start hidden and what that's going to do, as I mentioned prior is that it's going to make your object invisible at the beginning of the uh, at the beginning of the animation and then make it appear throughout the time the timeline so let's click on that 
and then execute all. And as you can see, it disappeared. Let's zoom in, scroll up, shift, middle mouse button, and drag, and press play, and now it appears. So this is a pretty cool add-on that really does a lot. So instead of you trying to set up all this stuff uh, by um, using Blender's default system of setting up a path and having objects go along a path because that is tedious sometimes and sometimes it doesn't really work the way you would expect it to work you can just use this automatically for maybe having planes like I mentioned go across the sky or having a hero or a person uh, go flying across the sky you know bullets objects th being thrown things like that so this is a pretty cool add-on uh, and I'll leave a description of it in the link below this video and I hope this was helpful to you guys, and I really appreciate you, guys, appreciate you guys who have watched my videos, who have subscribed, and those of you who will still subscribe. Really thank you guys for all your support and all your help. And uh, you guys stay safe out there, and I will see you on the next one. All right, adios.